God. Praise. Welcome to Greater Harvest Christian Center Churches Worldwide. And we thank God for you joining us tonight. Come on today, really, at noon. Amen. Come on. Glory to God. Amen. Bless it. Bless it. Bless it. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Listen, it's the first Sunday in August, and we thank God that we are in new beginnings. Amen. New season, new beginnings, new way, new living way. And we are practicing the mind of Christ and accessing the power of Christ. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And if you're looking for a church home, listen, uh, the information is streaming on the bottom of the stream. And again, that is 10493. 10943. Amen. 10943 Moncrief Dinsmore Road in the beautiful city of Jacksonville, Florida. And we invite you to join us at 12 noon on Sundays and 6 p.m. on Sunday evenings. Listen, uh, be prepared to stay tuned in because uh, we will be prayerfully intending for situations and circumstances. We're looking for people that are looking for a miracle, and we want to pray with you. We want to touch and agree with you in a new and living way that will access the power of God and change your life. Amen. Glory to God. Y'all clap your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you today, and this will be part one, about plugging into the power of prayer. Plugging into the power of prayer. Now, this has been a lot of teachings on prayer, and I'm going to teach some familiar stuff. But I want you to kind of know that what we are striving for at Greater Harvest Christian Center is to see prayerful manifestation happen instantaneously. Amen. That means that when we pray, we want to see it happen. And it may not happen then, but we're going to continue to contend and intend the faith for the belief of that which God has said. And so we're moving into a new level of prayer. And when we open up uh, sometimes for a prayer session, maybe on Sunday evening or sometime during the week, we're going to invite you to come out and we want to pray for it. We don't care what it is, stage four cancer. Whatever it is, we want to pray for it. I'm training the elders here how to touch and agree in faith and release their faith for miracle signs and wonders to happen in the name of Jesus. Come on, salute God one more time with a praise. Come on, glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So listen. So let's kind of just start the conversation about the power of prayer. And so I, hopefully I won't get into too much preaching. I just want to start a conversation. Now, one thing about prayer, all religions pray. There is no religion, evil or good, that does not pray. So there's something significant about prayer. And when I'm talking about prayer, I'm talking about biblical prayer, according to the way Jesus talks. But I want you to look at it in a new and living way that we have to get into if the kingdom of God is inside of us. And it is. And we have to have the mind of Christ. And we do. And we've been talking about the mind of Christ. Please go back and visit us on YouTube. Bishop James Rice on YouTube and get those other messages. As we start this part one of prayer, because you're going to need to understand the power that is in you. That, that, and that is the kingdom of God. Because when Jesus says that for you to repent, change your way of thinking because the kingdom of God has come near you. It's really because the kingdom of God was in him. Amen. And he was representing the kingdom of God. And so we really can say the same thing. And I gave the example that when, you know, uh, Peter and James are at the temple and the man is asking for money and he says silver and gold i don't have it but what i have i'm gonna render unto you what he did was get he prayed or he released the power of the kingdom of god so the man could be healed which is more valuable than any money i don't really believe that they were broke they were just saying you don't need money you need a job <laughs> glory to god <laughs> hallelujah amen and so understand that we have to come to the point that we recognize we have to be able to get in in order to 
manifest out. Come on, somebody say, get in, get in. to manifest out. To manifest out. So the, the challenge has been that most of the time we are out trying to get in. What we see seems to be far away from us, out of our reach. The money, the healing, the children acting good, the job or whatever is out. And we're trying to get it into our lives. And the Bible really doesn't work like that. The Bible works with you getting whatever you desire, the desires of your heart, getting that in and then projecting it out. Because the outer world is just a mu uh, just a movie screen, mm -hmm. and you're the projector. That's right, that's right. So if you want the picture to change, you got to change it. Mm -hmm. If you want the movie to change, you got to change it. Mm -hmm. You are the director and producer of your movie of life in conjunction with Jesus Christ, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit. You're working on their set. He's allowed you to be the director. That's called free will. That's why you are the director. People go that way. God doing everything. No, God is giving you the right to choose which direction you want to go in. Can he do anything and everything? Of course. But he's never going to violate your free will. So if you want to remain sick, you're going to remain sick. If you want to be broke, you're going to, now most people will say that them things that you're talking about, Bishop, I do not want. Well, I would be challenging you to say that. Are you purposely praying about them and you have focus on what you want more than what you do not have? Now, 70 to 90 percent of you will say, no, I've been focusing on what I do not have more than focusing on what I want. And so, therefore, you have what you say and what you think about. And then, so, understand this, that, listen, we have personal responsibility. Now, all of us, like children, love to blame somebody else. Because that makes us less responsible. But responsibility in Christianity is all about taking responsibility for our thoughts, our ways, our feelings, and lining them up with the thoughts and feelings and ways of Christ so that we will see that in our lives. So if we start to act like Christ, talk like Christ, walk like Christ, then we'll start to see the miracles of Christ. Now, I found this great little comment. It said the power of prayer. God delights to have conversation with you. Praying doesn't have to be difficult. There is no magic formula for praying. Just talk to God from your heart and be sincere and open your heart and mind to his voice. Now, one of the interesting comments here was talk to God from your heart. That means that you ought to be feeling what you're saying. But I will go a little different. This type of prayer that I'm talking about, because the Bible says you pray in all types of prayers. Amen. So there's many types. So I'm, I'm focusing on this particular type that I have coined as meditative prayer or attentional prayer, meditative prayer. We want to focus our mind and our heart and spirit on an intention of what we want to see, a singular. We're not going to pray for all the world's uh, problems and all my problems. We're going to focus on one thing. And this is what I call uh, prophetic meditative intention prayer now that's a long ways but it's all about prayer that focuses on meditatively intentionally what we want to see so if we get together we're going to pray for a uh like we did this morning for one hour elders we find out well, what's the issue we focus on that issue and literally surprisingly we almost were uh late we were late a little bit because uh i thought we would have a time and we started a little bit after uh maybe 11 and it was a quarter till 45 minutes went by and it seemed like we just had went into prayer. Amen. And I guarantee you, if I ask you to pray for 45 minutes, you will fall out the seat. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen.
But yet, when you do meditative prayer, like we did this morning, everybody was enjoying it. Everybody was in focus. Everybody was feeling the power of God. We joined hand. We felt the power of the Holy Ghost run through us. And, 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 and we know for a fact that the elder that we purposely, prophetically, and meditatively pray for this morning is healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, and, and again, I want to purposely say, because a lot of people will say, well, you know, are you, are you saying that we don't need to do these other kinds of prayers? No, we need to do all of it. I'm just focusing on one that we at the Harvest is focusing on for supernatural divine miracles. And Jesus did it also. Because, listen, let me, again, we're having a conversation. I'm going to give you scriptures and, and tune in tonight. I may have some slides up, or we may just go line by line in the Word. I just want to have a conversation on part one about the power of prayer. So let's just kind of just look at what we know about Jesus. Every time that there was a miracle, normally Jesus was away somewhere praying and then came on the scene. When he came walking on the water, he was in the mountains praying. When, when he went up, even on the Mount of Transfiguration, he went up there to pray. And he would always get away from the people, places, and things. You better write that one down. People, places, and things that were familiar to get to a place of unfamiliarity to his body so he can focus his mind and his spirit on God the Father, have a conversation. Because literally, when I want to have a conversation with somebody, I normally say, come on over here, let's talk. I get to a place where we can talk and really have a conversation. Because if I really want to have a conversation and not just shoot the jive, like we say, in the old school, if I really want to have a conversation, I want to get somewhere where I can be one on one with that person and talk to that person so they can talk to me and I can focus on them. They can focus on me and we can have a conversation, an interchanging of thoughts because words are thoughts put the sound. So my thoughts, I'm going to put the sound, his thoughts, he's going to put the sound and we're going to exchange thoughts and have a conversation. Now, that's a very important principle because if a word is a thought put to sound that means that i can pray thoughts without sound Amen. somebody better write that one down because i don't have no notes i'm just flowing with the holy ghost so that means that you can actually pray the thoughts of god for you without any sound and that's what we're talking about when we're talking about meditative prayer or when we are talking about prophetic prayer. It's about praying with your mind, the mind of Christ, the spirit, praying with the spirit. I don't need any sound. I don't need to say any words. When I'm praying for something, I see the picture because the picture is worth a thousand words. Amen. Now, one of the things also I'm going to lay the foundation is also for meditative prayer. I'm, I'm engaging my mind in, in, in word pictures. I'm praying with words without sound. But the other thing is I'm engaging my heart. Like when we were praying for the elder this morning, we had the picture of what we were praying for. We were praying for the change in her physiology and also what I instructed everybody now, feel it happening. I told them to smile because what smiling creates a pleasant feeling because the joy of the Lord is the strength. I wanted to change their emotional state because a lot of times when we do word prayers, you are not in the emotional state to proclaim that which you're reading out loud or what your mouth is saying. And a lot of times your brain's not even engaged in what you're doing repetitions or things that you have prayed before and just making sure that you don't sound crazy in front of the congregation or sound crazy to God. And I get all that and I'm not against any of that and all that is fine. I pray congregational prayers. My wife has a book of prayers. So we all about that. But there's another level. Somebody say another level. Another level. Another level, level is to have a conversation with God through the thoughts and the feelings instead of just words. 
that with sound, words with sound, because now your thoughts and pictures are speaking to God and your heart is speaking in love, joy, in the Holy Ghost. Because we are accessing, when we pray this kind of prayer, you have to enter into the gates with what? Thanksgiving in my heart and enter what? The courts with praise. So we enter in and thanking him for what we're seeing. Courts with praise. And we're going to say this is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice because he's going to answer our prayer. But I want to get back to this all the way from the song is that the kingdom of God is in where? It's inside of us. It's inside of us. It's inside of us. So then if I'm going to pray, I need to go what? Inside. Amen. Nothing wrong with any other kind of prayer. And I'm going to continue to say that because we have some religious leaders that get upset. And so we don't want you to get upset. So please don't get upset. We're just saying that, that there are many types of prayers. And we're talking about one that is phenomenal that you can engage your mind or the mind of Christ, your spiritual mind and your spiritual heart and pray in pictures and thoughts and feelings and point it into the kingdom of God, which is inside of you. And just like I told you before, in the mind of Christ, you ought to get there and have what? Mental rehearsal, repetition, and become. So, so again, all these things tie together. So the power of prayer is having a conversation with God. And so you need to be in a place you can have a conversation with him. And normally... Let me just say normal, normal prayer as taught in church and, and as we do and we will continue to do. Really, you it's almost a one way conversation because you are saying, God, does God, I give you praise. God, I'll give you glory. Thanks for my cars. Thank you for my houses. Thank you for blessing my children and all those things. So then you are not really having a conversation because, again, you're not allowing God to talk. But if you're sitting still. And you have meditatively relaxed your body and said, body, get out of the way because I want to have a conversation with God. And God, these are my thoughts because I don't have to have but like one thought. I may be going to talk to him about my health. I may be going to talk to him about my wealth. I may be going to talk to him about my happiness. So whatever that is, a picture. That's what I'm going to talk. And that picture will say a thousand things. And if I stay in that meditative state, God is going to speak to me because he speaks to me. His word is a life and spirit. So he's going to speak to me in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to leave that with some. He'll probably show me a picture. Like I shared with earlier while we were praying, you know, I shared with the elder that I saw God reaching into the situation and turning it around. See, that was God speaking back. I know y'all want to hear, this is God, and I'm talking to you, Archbishop. Do you hear me? <laughs> I know that's what you want. You're not going to hear it. <laughs> you forget that. It's not how God does. So if you're looking for that, you're always going to be disappointed. And then you'll be under the delusion that prayer doesn't work. Amen. And so we don't want you under that delusion. We're going to give you, and we're just having a conversation. I'm going to give you the scriptures in a moment. And I just want you to know that prayer is all about having a conversation. And you need to find an area where you, just like with a friend, you want to take some time and have a conversation. I hate talking to people who are doing something else while I'm talking. It's so disrespectful because you are not having a conversation with me you hear my voice but you can't tell me what i said because if you're really listening to me you hear my voice and in my voice you can hear my feelings and sometimes i won't even have to say it but it's the way i say something that you go like oh bishop something wrong but if you are not listening to me, you're not having a conversation with me. So you can't pray to God, oh, God, has shabba dabba doobie, and all this foolishness, and your mind is on the other side of town. Amen. Hallelujah. So meditative prayer is bringing in your mind 
bringing in your feelings and your emotions and centering yourself and telling your body, behave, you're not going anywhere. I'll feed you later. I'll get you something later. You'll get your caffeine later. You can get on your Facebook later. But right now we're going to talk to God. And you're going to be quiet in Jesus' name. And you're going to be still. Don't be fidgeting when you're praying to God. Get yourself comfortable before you go there. If we talk about meditative prayer, now I'm not talking about what you do with other prayers, that's okay. We talk a meditative prayer because if you're really having a conversation with God or you're really having a conversation with a person, you want to go sit down with them. Or, you know, I, I love to go with a chief apostle where we might go to the beach and sit down in a little cafe so we can watch the ocean so we can have a conversation. It's just us in the ocean and it's pleasant and it's nice and chill and we lay in back. Or we just go out and sit on the back porch or we go to the lake house and just chill out just look at the lake and just chill and resonate with each other and god that's how you have a conversation Amen. with god and with anybody else Amen. don't talk to me while you're doing 30 different things unless you're telling me you got a million dollars now i want to hear that <laughs> glory to god somebody say plug into the power, power. by prayer Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I want to share this with you. So step one is to recognize that the kingdom of God is within you. So the prayers that I want to direct, I want to direct them into the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, a lot of people say, well, I'm praying up to heaven. Okay, that's great. But heaven is in me. Amen. It's okay. Yeah, there is a third heaven. Yes. Uh, so I'm not, but, but the power, the Holy Spirit is in me. And since the Holy Spirit has a better connection to the third heaven, like somebody said, I'm praying to heaven. Well, since the Holy Spirit got a better connection and the Bible tells us he does that he makes intercession for us on a whole nother wavelength. That's why I said with groans and moanings. In other words, you know, listen, when the Holy Spirit is talking, it's talking on a totally different wavelength than your little peanut brain and your little ministerial heart is talking straight to God's heart and to God's mind. It's the connector. Your faith is the plug. Your belief is the plug. Just like we plug into the electrical socket, there is two prongs on that. One is positive, one's negative, but all the must be together in order to get all the power. So your mind and your heart got to be plugged into the Holy Spirit, which is the power, in order to get to the power plant, which is God. Ooh, I'm teaching good. That's not on none of my notes. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So again, so step one is the discover and research the kingdom of God inside of you. How do you get there? Close your eyes, relax, and spend some time with your inner self. Now, most of you are going to have trouble with that because you're going to want to get up. You want to talk about it's not working. Oh, I don't know. Well, listen to me. You know, the, when the last time you just sat, we, we sat for 45 minutes in prayer. I don't think we ever went 45 minutes in prayer. We did reading it out. But we were focused on a single thing, 45 minutes, and it seemed like five, 10 minutes. It just went by like that. You know why? Because we were out of time. We were in eternity where there is no time and everything is now. Woo, glory to God. That was good. That's not on my paper either. Wow. <laughs> But so it's important that recognize that you want to get there where there is no time. For me, there was no archbishop. All there was was faith, love and joy, peace and love and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's what I was experiencing. I wasn't experiencing. Well, I'm the archbishop and I'm leading this prayer. <laughs> no. I was experiencing that I was in love with what God was doing. I was at peace with what God was doing. I didn't have my mind on that chicken or that ribeye, whatever you're going to eat after church. Somebody said the kingdom of God is within you. Find it. 
That's your step one. Find it. Find it. Find that peace. Love, peace, joy, and the Holy Ghost. Find it. Find it. Find it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Find it. Find it. And all this other stuff from the outside will be added to you. Find it. Find it. Find it. Find it. Find it. Keep knocking. Keep asking. Keep seeking. Find it. Find it. Quit looking outside. It's inside. And you got to spend some inside time with God. Amen? Amen. Now, the power of prayer is the key to extraordinary success in, in consulting with God through the power of prayer. In other words, when you go and spend some time with God and you're thinking in thought pictures and godly emotions, love, peace, joy, gratitude, if you don't know how to feel love when you pray, if you're a dog fan or a cat fan, uh, just 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 know how when the animal comes near you and they miss you, how they hug up to you and how that makes you feel. Then, you know, because a lot of y'all don't love nobody. So <laughs> I know it's difficult when I say, oh, how the emotion of love <laughs> since you don't love nobody and you hate the one you're with. <laughs> You might as well say amen because I'm talking to real people about real problems and real situations and real emotions because a lot of times all you worried about is love is what somebody do for you. That ain't love. Hallelujah. Love is you can love me past my issues and my, my situations and circumstances and still love me knowing that the best of me will come out of me and these other things will pass away. I didn't mean to go down that road, but somebody needed that. So understand that your success in money and life requires that God gives you directions from the eternal about the, the situation that's in time. Hallelujah. Because in God, everything is now. Hallelujah. And he may give you as to what's going to happen in time, say 12 months, and put you in position that you are there early. So when everybody else gets there, it's a million, there, it's a million dollar idea. Because in God, everything's now. There is no time. There is only now. So now faith. Oh, my God. Ooh, I just want to talk. I don't want to preach. Ooh, I felt that. Somebody say now faith. Now faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now faith is there is no time. That means it's now. Ooh. So understand that your success and extraordinary success and supernatural healing and blessing requires that you find the kingdom of God inside of you, that place where you can just relax in the joy and the peace of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. That's why he says the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand, is near you because it was in him. <laughs> yeah. And he wanted it to be in you. And when the Holy Spirit came, he came and gave you power. <laughs> and that power was about the ability to access the kingdom of God and all the blessing. Somebody said it was a key. Jesus said, I behold, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of God. And basically, whatever you unlock is unlocked. And whatever you lock is locked. Wow. But that's done with the keys to the kingdom, meaning that you got to find the kingdom. Somebody says step one, find the kingdom, find the power. Ooh, glory to God. That ain't on my nose either. <laughs> find the keys. Find. I hope my the congregation, please take some good notes because I'm going to be coming to you. I'm going to need these notes later. Amen. <laughs> glory to God. Hallelujah. That's what I love about the Holy Spirit, that it'll download something spiritual. That you didn't think about. You don't spend two or three hours studying and lining up the slides and doing all that stuff. And the Holy Ghost going like, boy, I got something for you. <laughs> Amen. But I'm glad you're studying to show yourself approved so you can rightly divide the word of God. But I'm going to divinely, supernaturally download some pictures because the Holy Spirit talks in pictures it doesn't have to talk in words because a picture is worth a thousand words so look for god to talk to you in a picture of your future self 
That's why you should not be all hung up on your present self. You should be hung up on your future self in Christ. My future self in Christ is that I'm healed now. My future self in Christ is that I'm blessed now. My future self in Christ is that I am uh, uh, delivered now. In my future self, my broken heart is healed now. The gates are open to me now. Oh, my God. God, the job is now. My relationship is now. Woo! Woo! Glory. Amen. Somebody shout now. Now. Woo! My God. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers of living waters will flow from within them. So again, you know, and King James says, bellies of living waters. Now understand, again, Christ is talking about what is in you. Now, most of our focus in our religious lives have been what out. And, and, and it's OK. It's just that it's time to change. This is a church of change and power. So if you come into the sanctuary, we won't be focused on singing you a good song. We might sing a little bit out of key, but it's all right. Amen. Because we didn't come to be songstress. You know, our, 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 our preaching may not be as flamboyant as others. Our sanctuary is not a million dollar sanctuary yet because we are building million dollar people. Hallelujah. I want you to get that. We build a million dollar people that are transforming their lives and becoming supernatural. And when you become supernatural, you're worth more than money. Glory to God. When you can have an effect on sickness and disease, not only in your body, but in the body of other members of the body of Christ, you more than money. Glory to God. When you can change time and situations and circumstances of people who are caught by the enemy in the snares of the devil, that you can speak to those situations by going into the kingdom of God and unlocking their future. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Unlocking their healing. Glory to God. Unlocking their blessing through the very power of prayer in the kingdom of God. Woo, it's better than money. Hmm. And when you be singing those songs, that silver and gold, you won't be thinking, I sure need some silver and gold. Tell me, I love Jesus better than silver and gold. And most of you is like, I love him, but I need me some silver and gold. And I get that. I'm not, I'm not against that. What, what I'm saying is that once you get this revelation of power, once you get this revelation of being present with the power of God inside of you, once you get this revelation that the energy flows out, instead of in that you then recognize that you are very important to God that you are a new creature that has never been seen on this planet before you are a supernatural divine manifestation of Christ in the flesh glory to God no you are not Jesus the Christ but you are Christ because you have the anointing and that means you are in a little anointed one glory to God and the power of Christ the hope of glory is inside of you hmm. water living water you can refresh people with a word in a way so come on let me take you to the kingdom how I get there Bishop the Bible says you first got to repent. You got to change your mind and forget the way you used to think and start thinking this new and living way that all things are possible because you believe in Jesus the Christ. You got to forget that you're broke. You got to forget that you're sick. You got to forget that you're going through situations and circumstances and become somebody new to have something new. You can't carry the old into the new. You can't put the new wine into old wine skin. It's so powerful that new wine will burst it open. Ooh, glory to God. Look at your neighbor and say, I feel like busting out. <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. I'm out of that old wine skin. So it'll flow up out of you, the joy of the Lord, instead of you trying to get it. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody said, plug, plug in to the power by finding the kingdom of God. Now, step two is to develop a prayer closet. Now, 
if you don't have a place in your house, you can make any place where you can quiet and quiet your mind and get into the presence of God. And that requires that you be in a place where you're not disturbed so you can close your eyes because 70 percent of information coming into your from your outer world comes through your eyes. So that's why you have to close your eyes. You know, they didn't teach me that. <laughs> And I would I would say to you, man, listen, God know what I'm talking about. I don't need to uh, close my eyes. I mean, I'm just sharing with you. And, you know, in religiosity and theologi theological uh, uh, rehearsal of these principles, we understand that we go through different stages of prayer and then you should close your eyes. But nobody told me that I was closing my eyes to block out the outer world so I can go to the inner world. That makes more sense to me. Now, it might not make sense to you. It makes sense to me. You know, four years of doctoral college, I didn't have that kind of sense. I just did what they said because somebody higher than me who studied more than me said it was right. But I can understand now that I need to close my eyes. If I'm going to the kingdom of God inside of me, why I got my eyes outside on the kingdom of the world that's outside of me? So 70 percent of the information coming into my mind and my heart and my being is coming from the outside. So I need to shed it down. Somebody said shed it down. So then I want to close off my senses. That, that means the things that are going to uh, make me uh, uncomfortable. So if you're going to a place and you're going to a physical prayer closet, you need to make sure you got on some comfortable clothes. Amen. Why? Because you don't want anything to distract you from the kingdom of God, which is inside of you. And so you're shutting down the outside information from coming in so you can get information from the inside out. Because what God is going to show you when you go to talking to him, because conversation is two way communication. And he begins to show you pictures of your future. He begins to give you a feeling of a hope. That is past possibilities. Wow. You want to be able to receive that. Ooh, ooh, glory to God. Give God some praise right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. So definitely write down the scripture if you're listening to us online. And here also, Romans 14, 17, I've been talking about it. The kingdom of God is not meat or drink, meaning that it does not exist in the cardinal world, in this three-dimensional reality you call sight and sound. So it's not about what you're eating, what you're drinking, so it's not connected to carnality. So that means that you got to shut down carnality in order to get to the kingdom of God. All right? So the kingdom of God, but it's righteousness. Now, righteousness is, does not mean that you are... Mm, let me just say this righteousness is a legal term it actually means to be right with god and right with neighbor that's why it says that before you go to pray uh bring your gift go clean it up with your brother amen don't bring your gifts to the altars if you got mess going on with your brothers or your sisters so all of y'all before y'all go pray i don't care whether you do a meditative prayer any kind of prayer this is a principle that, that probably has stopped 70 percent of your prayers you still mad with your wife you still mad with your sons and daughters you still mad with your boss you still mad with the man who cut you off you still mad with somebody that knocked you in the head 10 years ago it doesn't matter Unless you forgive, you cannot access the kingdom of God. And if you want the power of God, the manifest, manifested power of God, then you're going to have to let all those things go. Not that any of them were right, but in order to be right with God and right with neighbor, you're going to have to forgive. So the kingdom of God is not outside meat and drink, but righteousness, being right with God and being right with neighbor. And so sometimes you just have got to call them and say, hey, listen, I forgive you. I'm letting it go. And of course, now you get that blowback from ignorant folk. Talking about, you ain't got to forgive me. <laughs> don't get don't get drawn into that sucker punch. Just hang up the phone and go on about your business because you don't need to explain to people that are unexplainable. They're not on your level. You have the mind of Christ. They have the mind of the world. So those two cannot walk together or agree. 
So don't be trying to convince them. Now, I just, why are you being that way? I just called to say, I'm sorry I, to forgive me. Do what you got to do. Hang up the phone, go on by and get in prayer. Somebody said, let's make a miracle. I ain't got time to play poo-poo with people in the crib. Hey, Amen. I ain't got time to play with diapers and rattlers. Hey, Amen. I ain't got time to be distracted by baby milk. I'm trying to make a miracle. Amen. Now, I know uh, some, you got some of these religious people. Talking, be some, How are you going to make a miracle? Well, hey, listen, listen. I, I don't know whether you know my God, uh, you know, Jesus, the Christ, Son of the living God. I think he said in his word that greater things would I do. And he was speaking personally to me. Mm. And then he said, whosoever shall say. So if I say it, then I can see it. And so I understand that you may not be there. So, you know, get off of me. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Change the channel. Go somewhere else. Glory to God. Amen. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't apologize for who I am because it's a new and living way. I've been in church all my life and I've seen it uh, 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 kind of crash and burn and become an entertainment center instead of a center for wisdom, knowledge and understanding how to operate in the kingdom of God. So I don't apologize for saying some of these things that might sound crazy. I really don't because you don't pay my bills. You don't give me no thrills. So what you say, what you what you talk about don't mean nothing to me unless you're talking about the kingdom of God and how we can be better and touch and agree for miracle signs and wonders and make the kingdom of God manifest on the earth and be, tear down the walls of the devil and bring people together glory to God and see miracles <laughs> Jesus answered them and said hey listen um, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Those that are born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So let me break this down. So in order to get into the kingdom of God, with it's in you, you got to go spiritually. You can't go naturally. Flesh and blood can't enter. And I know some, some people are like, well, Bishop, I thought he was talking about when the kingdom of God comes down from the sky. Yeah, he talking about that, too, because you're going to have to have a spiritual body. But right now you hear. And so the word is when now somebody said the word is when now. So he's talking about the kingdom of God that is inside of you. Where now. He said you can't go into that place in prayer in your flesh suit. You got to go ask the spiritual man. And the spiritual man is your mind, not necessarily your brain, because your brain is flesh. Your mind is your consciousness, the energy of God, the spirit of God that controls the brain and everything else. Amen. That's the mind. It is the spirit. It is the spirit that is in a man. Glory to God. When that leaves, the brain's still here. Glory to God. But I look at you in that casket, you ain't moving. Because <laughs> you are not there anymore. The person that we knew, the personality that we knew has left the building called a body. Hallelujah. My God, I'm teaching up in here. So listen, to get into the kingdom of God, you are going to have to become supernatural, spiritual. That requires you closing out the outside. Somebody say close your eyes. Try to close your ears. And close your mind to the outer world. And go inside to the kingdom of God. Now, there's a lot of techniques to get there. And we won't talk about techniques. But we know that you can't stay uh, cardinal and become spiritual. And we know that once you access the kingdom of God, all things are possible. Amen. Now, some some prayers going to require fasting and praying and just a quick talk on that. We'll talk a little bit more. Fasting is all all about denying your flesh so you can have a deeper level of spirituality with God. And that's why he says some things only come by fasting. and prayer. So you crucify the flesh that you ain't going to eat. You ain't going to drink. You ain't going to move until I see God. 
Because notice now, 40 days, 40 nights, Jesus, before he accessed the kingdom of God in this flesh realm, he had to be driven out into the wilderness where he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And at the end of that, the devil came to test him and see how strong he was. The issue with fasting is that as your flesh dies, your spirit becomes stronger. Woo, glory to God. So as you kill or crucify your flesh with fasting from television, from radio, from negativity, all those things, because you got a lot of things you need to de detach and unplug from in order to plug into the new. Amen. Now, the body does not like you telling it we ain't going to watch no TV. <laughs> it doesn't like we're not going to listen to no music unless it's, it's, it's a faith music or meditative music so I can calm myself. Uh, we're not eating anything. We're not doing nothing till I hear from God. See, now now you moved in a whole nother realm. Some things only come by fasting and praying. So listen, to enter in, you got to go spiritual. Amen. I want to get up out of here. Amen. I'm already out. Wow, 1245. Amen. We're going to have to pick this on verse two. Um, so listen, I'm gonna leave it right here and, uh, we'll do part two this evening, but I want to say this and I'll pick it up here on this. So we know that the kingdom of God is inside of us. We know that prayer is a conversation and you must, uh, move from the, your present place. If I want to have a pleasant conversation with someone, I normally say, listen, let's go here and talk about it. And we try to get away from everything else so that we can touch and agree and come out with a solution or come out with some visions and some ideas or whatever. And so when you're talking to God, you talk to him in pictures. Somebody says pictures. Amen. So if you're having a conversation with God, you, you give him thought pictures of what you want. You don't have to say the word. You can think the word. Amen. Because words are thoughts put to sound. So what you want to do is while you are meditatively praying and going inside is that if you want to talk to God in words, you put the words on the screen of your mind. You don't have to say them because when you start to engage your tongue and all this physiology, you're going to come back out into this natural world. Y'all, you hearing me? So when you get to talking in tongues or talking the word, you're going to have to come in and access the natural world because that's what you're speaking to. But if you're speaking to God, you got to go to the inner world. So it depends on who you're speaking to. So if I'm speaking to the outer world, I can be alive and say, I command that demon to leave in the name of Jesus. Whereas the demon is outside, is in that person, but I'm talking to the outer world. I command money to come from the north and south. I'm talking to the outer world. So now I, what well, I'm conscious Life and death is in my tongue. I'm speaking it out into the outer world. But I'm speaking with such magnificent power that is connected to the inner world. All right. So we're going to stop on this and we'll pick up part two at six o'clock. I want you to join me. Listen, all the information on where we're located is at the bottom of the screen. And so please join us at 10943 Moncrief Densmore Road. And you can come this afternoon. If you come this afternoon, we're going to broadcast about six. So you need to be here early because uh, we're going to lock the door after six because we're broadcasting. And then after that, we're going to open. And if you need special prayer, the elders will be here to lay hands on you and the sick is going to recover. The blessings of the Lord are going to make you rich. And who's the blessing? I'm the blessing. The elders here are blessing. Now, how can you say that, Bishop? Because the Bible declares that if we are Abraham's, if we are Christ Jesus, then we are Abraham's seed and we are heir to the promise and the promise to abraham is that he would not only be blessed but he'll be a blessing and so of course the members here at greater harvest christian center will be your blessing believing with you for your miracle and we'll take that up after service at seven o'clock but you got to be here on time at six to get the word which is going to be phenomenal because it's going to open up your mind and your heart to information and revelation to perform and manifest that miracle in your life because you can't become anything until you know something. <laughs> you can't become anything until you know a thing. You got to know a thing to become a thing. 
And so often, you know, we don't understand the mechanism of something. And then therefore, it's easy to operate in doubt and unbelief because that's what the body, the card in the mind will do. I don't know where that's going to work. Well, I know you don't know because you're the card in the mind. This is a spiritual thing. And spiritual things cannot be detected by the card in the mind. By, that's by design. So, again, we'll pick it up at, at step two, talking about where's the prayer closet, how to enter in, and what Christ says about it. I appreciate you. I'm Archbishop Dr. Jane Rice. And on behalf of my lovely wife, the chief apostle, Dr. J.G. Rice, we bid you peace and blessings and prosperity in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember this, that we aspire we empower and we give you the information needed to not just be ordinary anymore, but to be extraordinary in the things of God. Come on, give God some praise. Bye-bye. Sow a seed tonight. Amen.